Hi, I'm Phil. And I'm Jane. Welcome to another edition of Table for Two. We're glad you came back to watch another show. This week we're bringing you a classic board game. Table for two, table for two, having fun, playing games, just me and you. For those of you who have not watched our show before, we base our game reviews on five criteria. They simply are, number one, is the game easy to learn? How long did it take us to figure it out? Number two, how's the manufacturing or the quality of the game? Number three, did we have fun? Did we actually enjoy playing the game? You know, did we have a good time? Number four is timing. Was the game a little too short or a little too long? Or was it just right for our, our, our taste there and timing? And number five, would we play this game again? Would it sit in our closet collecting dust? Or would we actually take it out and play that game again? So those are really five important criteria for us playing games. So this week we're playing a classic board game, as I mentioned. And this week's game is called Pente. Pente is actually a Greek word and it represents number five. And number five is very important to this game and you'll see that in just, just a moment. Now this game has a little bit of a fun history about it. Uh, in the 70s there was a man named Gary Gabrell. Gary actually created this game based on a Japanese board game. And it was meant for his customers in a pizza restaurant. So when you're waiting for your pizza, sometimes you're sitting in a restaurant and you're like, oh, where's my pizza? Where's my pizza? In their case, they were playing Pente, waiting for their pizza to come to keep them occupied. Now Hasbro actually bought, uh, produced this game in 1977, so they were the original manufacturer of this game, was Hasbro. But in 2004, a company called Winning Moves Games also produced this uh, version of Pente that we're playing today. So we are playing the Winning Moves Games version. Now this is a two-player game, although you can play with partners, it tells you in the, in the book how to do that. But in this case, as you know, we play two-player games. So this is actually perfect for us. So Pente. Now, as you also may know from prior shows, typically when we play the game, we have a drink. Uh, and then we review the drink of choice during our review process. Mm -hmm. This week, we thought we'd do it a little bit different, and we'd actually drink while reviewing the yeah, game. Yeah, I like this idea. Yeah. And we may change that around next time, but let's take a sip of this. Mm. A little bubbly. Mm -hmm. This week, we're having some champagne. Champagne. Um, and in case you care what champagne we're having, it's called Anna de Cordur... I can't say it. Cordernu. Cordernu? Uh, Anna de <laughs> it's French. Cordernu. Cordernu. It's a Brut Rosé. Um, we'll show a little picture of the bottle later. And we'll let you know what we think about it as we're playing, uh, not playing, but reviewing this game. See, I'm already drunk. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's very bubbly. <laughs> it's very bubbly. So, Phil, why don't you give the viewers a little explanation about this wonderful game called Pente? No problem. So, setup of this game is very simple. Mm -hmm. You see everything here, a board, and we both have a set of stones. Um, there are no dice, there's no money. No um, punch pieces. There are no punch Nothing pieces. Nothing to punch, just a beautiful color. That is your jewelry favorite thing, stones. no punch pieces. So, like jewelry. so, that's it. There are two ways to win at Pente. Mm -hmm. One is by placing five of your stones in a row, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Mm -hmm. The other way is by capturing five pairs of your opponent's stones. Kind of like checkers. Kind of Capture like pieces from the other person. Yeah. Taking your stones. Yes, taking somebody else's stones. But you have to have five pair. Five pair, yes. yes. To win. Okay. Um, so, let's talk about how to play the how game. How play. So, the first thing we do is decide who goes first. Me. We've decided. Um, or you could um, let the loser of the last game go first because you do have a slight advantage when you lead the game. So that's, that's why I want to go first. I want the advantage. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you, <laughs> could, you could flip a coin. Nope. It's me. Okay. All right. I'm the wife. I, I give. It's I say you. it's me. You go first. See, that's what husbands do. Isn't that that thing with husbands? They have to disagree and everything's happy. Yeah, it's something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm going first. I'm going first. <laughs> Now, there's only one thing that the player going first can do is place a stone in the large star in the middle of the board. In the middle. That's it. Not in a square. Good point. Yes. So we're not playing in the squares. Nope. We're playing on the intersections um, where the lines meet. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple things to note about that. The, the, you can legally place stones on the border of the board. Mm -hmm. You can also place stones where the border and these lines would intersect if these, what they call hemispheres, um, were not on the board. So 
I actually have three places I can play stones that are covered, actually five that I could play that are covered. But the first one but has to be put in the middle. The first one starts in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now the gameplay goes very simple from there. Each player, alternating fashion, plays one stone. Mm -hmm. So like chase down. Play. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> now here's an example of how I can capture a pair. So Jane just placed a stone over here, forming two uh -oh. in a row. I'm on one side. I'm in trouble. If I play another stone in that line uh -huh. with no spaces in between, I capture both of those stones. Now it's only for two. I can't capture uh -huh. three. It's only a pair. So I capture a pair of those stones. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. But you can turn right around and play stones in the same place again if you want. Correct. So we'll continue play. I will place a stone here. So I can actually go here and I'm not capturing myself, nor can Phil be capturing me when I'm placing them in the middle of That's two a, of the opposing stones. a very good point. You can't force your own capture. Mm -hmm. So Jane can leave those stones there and they'll stay in the game unless I capture them some other way. Correct. So, let's so I'm going to continue more. to play and let's see, I'll work on my strategy over here. I'm going to go over here. And uh, let's see, I'm going to play another one over here. Now when I place this stone, I actually now have three stones in a row, and I have no opposition on either side. Right. When you do that, there's an etiquette rule that says you have to say the word tria. So I'm letting Phil know I just put three in a row with nothing around me. Yeah, and the etiquette, there, so there's a couple rules of etiquette in this game. The reason they have the rules of etiquette um, is uh, because you're not supposed to win Pente by uh, a, your opponent's simple blunder. Oh, I you know didn't realize that you had three in a row. So you're really kind of declaring or announcing that I've got three in a row, or in Jane's case, she's got three in a row. Mm -hmm. I need to pay attention. You know, they're, they're, it's not something that pay just looks by. I'm paying attention. So I'm going to, of course, respond and say I'm going to have to play defense and block you on one side. Right. If I didn't do that, I would lose in two moves. So now that he's done that, though, I can continue to try to get my five in a row yes, by placing can. my marker here. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to say... Tessera. Tessera. Tessera means four. So I'm not really sure why I can't just go four or three, but I guess because the game is called Pente. Yeah, Tria, Tessera, Pente. We stick with Greek. We're sticking with the Greek. I Ooh, guess you could say Now I feel like have some Greek food. Hmm. Maybe later. Well, we'll think about that. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to play another stone, and so here, okay, she said Tessera, but you know, I think I know what I'm doing. I'm going to play a Tria right here and go after my strategy, so Tria. And I go, whoop de doo I just won the game. Chaps, there you chaps, go. Chaps. Five in a row. Five in a row. In reality, I don't think Philip would have been that dumb. He would have probably blocked I me. probably would have blocked <laughs> But I'm, we're just showing you how five in a row might look. Now, yes. admittedly, if I didn't do that, for some reason I thought I was being cool, I could actually go here and collect two of his stones if I want to try to, um, you know, uh, get his his pair. Now, yes. if you have, if I actually had, um, let's see, where can we go here? If I put my my uh, stone here, mm -hmm. and then I put my stone here, is that correct? Uh, if you put one here, here and here. Okay. Then. I'll, I'll, let's make this work, and then okay. I'll put another one here. So put your stone there. Yeah. Now, if you put another stone here. Right. So you can actually capture multiple pairs, multiple pairs. on a single move. Right. So um, she places the stone here, these two pairs both go away all at once. So, so in theory you can capture here. multiple There's definitely at some once. creativity here and you have to pay attention. Yeah. I mean it's easy enough to take turns playing the game, but you mm -hmm. really have to think where am I placing these stones. Yeah, because it's very easy to all of a sudden go from like seven to three stones on the board. Like, wow, I didn't realize that. Or all of a sudden, I win. That. Yep. You win, how did you, Oh man, you won. And, yeah. and because you weren't paying attention or you weren't taking enough time. Yes. So that, the, the, that's everything you need to know about how to play this game. Yeah, so five stones or five captures. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really easy to, to understand what your goal is, but to get there, maybe not so easy. Right. <laughs> so let's review a little bit about this game. But let's just first talk about the fact that we're easy to learn. Not easy mm -hmm. to play necessarily, but easy to learn. We absolutely gave that a five. And why we gave it a five is because within five minutes, or less actually, I read this lovely rule book, Good Job Winning Moves Games, a very simple, easy to read rule book, mm -hmm. lots of examples and pictures, and, and some frequently asked questions, which is good too. Um, and within five minutes, I learned this game, told him how to play it, and we were on playing. So it wasn't yes. like we had to spend a lot of time, we didn't touch the rule book maybe more than once about the etiquette. Other than that, rule book stayed to the side once we started playing. Mm -hmm. So absolutely a five, for easy to learn. Definitely. Now, Phil, 
Not much manufacturing to talk about here, but... <laughs> this is two. a really short part of the review. Yeah. There's a board, mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are stones. Mm -hmm. The board folds in one place. It's a nice thick board. Yep. It lays perfectly flat. The only concern I would think is do the stones lay flat on the seam, and they do. And they do. And the stones That's are nice, it. nice glass stones. Mm -hmm. I would say keep them away from your cats, though. We have three, if you remember. Yeah, cats, um, small children. I like to back them away. around and also hear stones going across the floor. Right. You also get a couple of uh, nice little uh, drawstring okay. bags. Yep. So, it's um, good stuff. Now, it's nice. I kind of mentioned one more thing about the sure. stones. Now, this game comes with, at least the one we purchased, mm -hmm. blue stones, which I'm playing, and, and, and amber color stones uh, that Phil's playing. Now, you may not like the color of those stones. I you don't like not... amber. Who's amber? Oh. <laughs> For mine. Oh, okay. The stones, you mean? The stones, yes. Yeah, so if you don't like the color of the stones, or you lose the stones, like I said, your cat throws them around the house or whatever, you can actually purchase these stones in any game shop. Um, I actually bought a couple different colors because I like to try new things and then mm -hmm. have a little uh, variety in my life. So I have red stones, I have green stones, and I even have purple stones. If I can't tell purple that much on the camera, but, uh, you know, different colors to, you know, have some fun. But again, if you lost them, it's a great, a great, easy replacement to those stones. Now, we actually bought these stones, in case you care, uh, from a company called Chessex. They actually have a website. They also do dice and other types of uh, game pieces. But it's kind of cool. You can kind of collect all the different colors of... Uh, reminds me of my grandma when she used to have bingo chips in the old days. Mm. They used to have different colors and or different markers. But sure. at any rate, you can uh, definitely add, buy... Add a little personality to it. Yeah, I want purple or red or you know, something to that effect. But it, So getting manufacturing was great, but if you lose the pieces, mm -hmm. easy enough to replace. So we gave that a five. We gave it a five. Yeah, we gave that a five for manufacturing. Yes. So um, tell the viewers, how do you think uh, this game was as far as entertainment value? Well, you know, I have to say... Uh, this is partially my own problem, but um, it was fun to play. Admittedly, totally fun to play. My issue is when I play a game, I play a little too fast. So I was just like, please, 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 please. And the next thing you know, I win, I win. So, so at the end of the day, it was fun for me, probably more fun for you, uh, but it is strategic. So you have to take time. You have to think yes. while you're playing. Now, so we actually played the first game. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about timing in a minute, but you did win. Uh, so, of course, I didn't like the game at that point. I don't like this game. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it is fun to play. So we gave it a four. Yes. We gave it a four, four. for a fun to play. But part of the reason it's on a five, a little bit about the timing, Philip. Okay. We'll talk a little about the timing. Yeah. Um, so we get the game out. It takes literally 30 seconds to set up, as you can see. And learn. <laughs> and we decide we're going to play one game and do the review. Yeah. So we play one game, and in about, oh, eight or ten minutes, we're done. And I'm like, that's it? I'm like, okay. Um, all right, I guess we'll uh, play a second let's game. Let's try it again, and if, mm -hmm. especially because I lost the first game. I thought, well, let's play again. Maybe I can win the second game. Okay, so the second game we thought, okay, well, we'll see if we can end in a tie. So uh, we play the second game. It takes about 10 minutes. He wins again. Okay, I won the second yeah, game. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, fine. All right, so let's play three. Let's play another one. Mm -hmm. And you won the third game. Okay, so I won the third one. <laughs> so at that point, I'm hating this game. <laughs> it's all about me. No, but seriously, I did like the game, but I kept losing because I wasn't taking enough time. I've learned that lesson. Now, what's kind of cool about this Pente version, the winning moves version of Pente, at least for sure, I'm not sure about the Hasbro, so I'm not, you know, don't quote me on that. But on the Pente Winning Moves version, they actually give you another version to play. It's called Pente Plus. The only difference is, besides the blue chips and the amber chips that you receive, or, or stones, you also get two more, and they're green, or like a light-colored green, and those are called Power Stones. Each person gets a set of two. So you have to decide when you'll use these. You, you, know, you, have, you don't want to use them any old time. You have to decide when it's a good point to use them. What a Power Stone simply does is it plays just like any other stone you have, except that when you place that power stone, it gives you another turn to then place one of your regular colored stones. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about that is you can use it strategically, um, but you have to place your blue or your whatever color you're, you're, you are that day, a stone on a, on a little diamond shape. There's like little yeah. diamond shapes on the board we'll show a little bit later. Um, so you can actually see um, the diamonds and you place it on that, that shape only. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that you're getting two stones for one, and strategically, you could potentially go, oh, I won the game, or you can have a, a you know, capture, because the power stone can actually represent your color or my color. Yes, it's up to the player's choice. Right, so it's, it's kind of a cool thing, a little extra factor, a little bonus. Very easy to use, but because we used it on the fourth game, I won the fourth game. Yes, 
you you called Tria, and the next thing I knew, she had five in a row. Because she I didn't used even have to get a test. And diamond, and I had the five in She's a row. She's right to five. So that really worked for me. And then yeah. we said, well, you know, now we have three games to one. Let's play one more, and we'll say best of five. Mm -hmm. um, you beat me on the fifth and game I, as well. And yeah, but unfortunately, it, actually, I shouldn't say best game of five because in reality, he won. So anyway, three games to two. So for the series of five games that we played, we're going to give the win to Phil uh, on this. Uh, edition of table for two so he's still up on the game mm -hmm. board to there right. and uh, you're gonna have to buckle down here and catch back up gotta win the next game gotta <laughs> win the next game so so back to timing again we said uh four for time with three if we play it again mm -hmm. uh three why we said three if we play it again well number one it is a very short game um it would be one of those games where you know you take it out of the closet you're not just playing it one time you know you're going to play it a bunch of different times but also i was thinking we could pair it up with another game so we're playing a game night, and we have a game that's a little bit longer, and let's say we're done with that game, we still feel like playing something. Mm -hmm. This would be a great game to take out of the closet just for a quick game, uh, just to kind of get through that and, and have something else to play. Now, I did play this game again, just to be fair, but not with Philip. Sorry, I'm cheating on you on the games front here. But uh, I really didn't like the fact that I lost so much. So I wanted to learn more about the strategy of the game and make sure I could actually win the game. So I went online to do a little research about Pente, as I mentioned earlier about the history, but I also found a really great website. It's called Pente.org or Pente.org. And what it is is the place where you can register for free and you can actually play against the computer or you can play against a local community participant that actually is also on that uh, game site as well. Now, like I said, there's no fee for registration. There is a way you can donate to help fund the site. But at the end of the day, it's a great way to practice. So I did, I did play quite a bit after you and I played to see mm -hmm. if I can get better at Pente. Um, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to drink on this. I, I, I think I need to be worried, though, because I haven't been on the site yet. And you've been, it, yeah. you, you say you're losing on the site, but I know you're probably practicing in the next time we Unfortunately, I have never yet won on the site. Not once. But I'm going to keep practicing. So if you want to practice, go to Pente.org and maybe you could find me. And we can play together, and I'll probably lose again. So you're probably going to beat me the next time we play. Possibly, but it is a really no, a, a nice little way to play the game if you don't, you know, if you want practice. You don't, if you don't have a board game. You can try it on, online. Pente.org, very good website. So, so play again. Yes. We set a three. Yes, we set a three. You know, the one thing I will say is, you know, it's kind of the, you know, just like poker or checkers. Uh, you know, you're probably going to play more than once when you get this game out. It's that mm -hmm. kind of game. Yeah. So you don't just play it one time, put it away. Right. You're going to pl probably play three or five times or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's designed for that. You wouldn't get out a deck of cards for poker and just play one hand and put them away. You're going to do the same thing. I'm not very game. good at poker either. So for the final score. Final score. Out of 25. Out of 25, we gave it 21. 21, still a great score. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've had a score less than 20 yet on the show. No. Uh, we have good taste in games. Yes, we do. You that's know, all I, that's I'm all thinking about. about I don't think I'd want to play like a seven. Well, if we play the seven, we have to tell the viewers what we really think. I know, but. We yet have found one that's really bad though, so that's yeah, good news. No, I, I, I think we're, we're gonna be okay there. So. so hopefully you'll try this game as well. Yes. Uh, talking about that though, uh, what about this drink? Scoring things. The drink. You know, yeah. it's uh, a little bit bubbly, as it should be, for uh, champagne. Finish mine. Yeah, it's got a lot of bubbles. We're not, I'm not personally a big champagne fan because I'm not into the bubbles. Um, it's got a nice flavor, though. I'll give it credit for flavor. It, it's uh, it's pretty nice. Not, 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 it's like not it. making me drunk, which nope. is a good thing, although I might sound it. <laughs> um, I'm not. Uh, but I'd give it a three, maybe? Yeah. I'll you. give it a three. Three sounds good. Three for the champagne. Yep. As a matter of fact, it's not so bad. Let's I'm bring that really, bottle on have another glass. We'll put a slide up here so you can see what uh, what this uh, label says because we may not be we pronouncing, not pronouncing it, it right. I'll try to say it again. Anna D. Cordonu. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cordonu. So, I'm French. You think I would is. know how to say that name, last name, but I don't. All right. So okay. uh, we'll give a three for the uh, champagne today, the drink Sounds of choice. Good. And I'm not sure if we'll drink again during the next game. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> we'll see. So how do we purchase this game? There's lots of ways to purchase this game. Yes. Unfortunately, not from Winning Moves Games, though. <laughs> no, we actually talked to the manufacturer no. of this game when we were at a, a, a conference recently, a Gen Con, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, they're no longer producing this game for, you know, for new pr production. But you can still buy this game, so no fear there. 
You can go to your eBay, you can go to Amazon. We definitely double check that for you, so you can definitely purchase a copy of this game if you'd like. Mm -hmm. The range of price is really out there, just to be honest with you. Uh, it's between 25 and 50 from what I saw, and I think it's because it's out of production. Yeah, that could change a lot. You might even find the Hasbro version out there. Mm -hmm. uh, just to be, uh, I'd like to actually find the Hasbro version. I'm yeah. quite curious. Maybe I'll buy a copy of the Hasbro version. But it's definitely purchasable. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to purchase it, or if you can't find it for some silly reason, go to that pente.org. Even if you just want to try to play the game. It's just it's a great little game to play. And mm -hmm. Now, it's funny, though, if you remember the history, the guy who developed this game is because pe people were waiting for their pizza. Yeah. You know, and now that I'm thinking about that, and we're drinking some champagne here. No, my stomach's been growling through the I whole know, day. I'm starving here. I think we need to go to the pizza place. I think we need to pick up the phone. Or maybe we get a delivery, maybe, and yeah. you know, edit the show while we're uh, eating some pizza. Sounds good. Ah, oh, it just sounds so good. Some pizza. Oh, I like pizza too much. That's my problem. Now, uh, I would say to see you in two weeks, but we're not going to see you in two weeks. We're going to see you in one week. Yeah. Uh, we actually are creating, or we're creating a new show uh, for next Saturday for Halloween because it is close to Halloween, and we wanted to make sure we got a show in before Halloween. So be sure to watch next Saturday, mm -hmm. not two weeks, but next Saturday, to watch our Halloween episode. Uh, we'll be doing a really cool game, which we won't tell you right now, but it's yes. going to be kind of cool. Um, and then, just to keep something else in mind, after the Halloween show, we'll go back to our two-week schedule. But on the next show after that, we're actually going to be giving a game away. So stay tuned for that. Keep watching the show because you actually might win a game, which is uh, you know, fun. A free yes. game is always a good thing. So until next time, though, do us a favor. Please like this video here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Also, subscribe to our channel. That's it's really important. It's so important to subscribe. Honestly, because if you don't subscribe, people are not aware over the YouTube world that we're actually uh, people are actually watching the show. So uh, we know you find us through Facebook, which mm -hmm. is great, or on our website. Uh, yes, you can start from tablefortwoshow.com. To find us, a little bit about us there. But right. keep in mind, you have to still subscribe on the YouTube side right. if you want to uh, give us some credit for doing good work. Right. If you'd like to follow a Twitter feed, follow mm -hmm. us at, at Table for Two Show. Yeah, you can follow us or tweet us there, as they mm -hmm. say. But until the Halloween show, we'll just bid you goodbye and happy gaming. And I'm going to drink the rest of the champagne. Happy gaming. So am I. Cheers. Cheers. Table for Two Show, created by Mrs.